until now we have seen the authentication and authorization configurations within the Spring Boot application itself. Now in this video, we'll start configuration on the Keycloak application and configure within the Spring Boot application the configurations that will establish a connection between the Keycloak and the Spring Boot application for the authentication and authorization. For that, let's first go into this client. We have this Spring Boot backend application client and the configuration for authorization is present within this client and not at the ream level. This is because every application will have its own REST API and the authentication and authorization should take place within that application and that's the reason the authentication and authorization configuration is present within the client. Let me enable this authorization before you can see over here that you will not find any tab with the name authorization. Let's enable this and save. Now there is a tab with authorization. You'll see several tabs within this authorization. We'll not make any changes right now on this. By default, it will be enforcing. So before going for the configuration, you see here we have a tab called resources, scopes, policies, and permissions. These are the configuration tabs which we will be dealing in this and the coming videos. By default, Keycloak provides the configuration for resources, policies, and permissions. If you see policies, we have a JavaScript configuration and I do not want that and hence we'll delete all these configurations, all these default configurations. Let's delete this and if you delete the policy it will also delete the permission as well yeah as we are trying to add the accessibility of all the resources to all the users i'm going to create a resource here with the name default resource and uri will be slash star in a sense for every rest api on this client I'm not going to make any other changes. We'll leave it as it is. We'll see all other properties later. Let's save. Now that the resource has been created, we need to create a policy. Before creating a policy, let me just show you in the users for each of the user created for this ream, a default role will be default roles dive dev. In essence, the name of your ream prepended with default roles will be the role for each user created within this ream. So when I want to create a policy, I can give this role to the policy and that makes sure that all the users for this ream will have the access to all the APIs within this client. So let me create a policy. Here you see there are several type of policies. User, in a sense, the policy defined for each user or a group of users, time period, role, regex. We'll see each of these in detail later. For now, we need to use this role configuration. The name of the policy is default policy. You can give any name. I'm just using it as default policy. And from the roles, as we have seen, every user will have this role. That's the reason we'll select this. I'm not going to make any changes for this required and logic. We'll see this as well later in the videos. Save. And in the permissions, there are two type of permissions. One is a resource based permission and another is a scope based permission. Since we are not using the scope based permission here, we have not defined any scope based permission. And that's the reason this scope based permission is disabled. As we have created resource, the resource base permission is enabled. Default permission and the resources is the resource which we created earlier, this one, and the policy which we have created earlier. Will not make any other changes, just save. So that's it. This is the configuration in the key clock part. Let's see the configurations in the Spring Boot application in our next video. Thanks for watching.